Greetings from Barbados. I'm Sharon Marshall. The story of Barbadian migration to Cuba and back is very much a part of my own family history. My mother was born in Cuba of Barbadian parents and came to Barbados with her mother and younger siblings at age nine after my grandfather died in Cuba. My first book published by the University of the West Indies Press, Tell My Mother I Gone to Cuba, Stories of Early 20th Century Migration from Barbados, looked at Barbadians and other British West Indians who had migrated to Cuba to work mainly on sugar plantations, which American industrialists had invested in. This new book, A Return to Roots, Cubajans in Barbados, is the story of the children and grandchildren of those early migrants who have come to live in their father's and grandfather's homeland. They have fulfilled the promise of their ancestors who were not able to return themselves. My husband Pedro is one of the Cubajans, a term which he coined to describe the Cuban Barbadians. His paternal grandfather had migrated from Barbados to Cuba. Pedro is one of the persons whom I interviewed for the book, and he told me, it was my dream to come to Barbados. I remember in October 1985, I was on my way to Guyana. Since I had chosen to become a teacher of English as a career, I was given the possibility to go to the University of Guyana for a training course. And there was a stopover here at the airport. And I said, one day I will come here and see the land of my grandfather. And that dream has come true. So what else should you know about the book? It's divided into two sections. Section one is focused on social and political developments during the period before Barbados gained independence in 1966 and before the 1959 Cuban Revolution. Section two looks at developments since then. While two chapters at the start of each section set the historical context of the migration, both in Barbados and in Cuba, the compelling oral testimonies of the Cubasians themselves are at the heart of the book. There are three main waves, if you will, of the migration to Barbados. The 1930s, when Cuba's sugar industry experienced a decline after the Great Depression and measures were implemented to protect the local labor market. Then in the 1960s, in the immediate aftermath of the 1959 revolution, and then the 1990s, 2000s, following the special period when Cubans experienced hardship following the collapse of the Soviet Union. I interviewed people who came during all three periods. The oldest interviewee is Ophelia Nichols, who is 97 going 98. She came to Barbados in 1936 at age 12. The youngest interviewee is Josue Ramirez Nelson, 30, who came in 1999 at nine years old. These Cubajans have made a significant contribution to Barbados, especially in the field of education. Many of them have taught or are teaching in the primary Spanish program. Some have taught at the secondary level, at the Barbados Community College, and at the University of the West Indies. Hospitality, entertainment, and banking are some of the other areas where they have served or are serving. The book gives some insights into their life in Cuba, how they traveled to Barbados and their experiences on arrival and subsequently. For example, Gilbert Rowe, who was the promoter of the Barbados Jazz Festival for many years, who, he came to Barbados in 1970 and he told me about the moment that marked the beginning of his journey. I can remember when that cable came as a child because a man on a motorcycle used to come up, deliver the cable to you. You were given permission to leave. You had to leave the house instantly, not tomorrow. You leave the house and they seal it. It was now the property of the government. Graciela King also came to Barbados in 1970. She said, when I got to school, the children would not go to the classes. They wanted to hear my sister and me speak Spanish. And that had me so upset because I said to myself, they never heard about another language. Why are they getting on like that? I was so vexed. We used to sit down under a tree to have our break and the principal had to come and send the children to the class and move them from around us because they wouldn't leave. This is the same situation which my mother and her sister encountered 
when they came to Barbados in 1936, so not much has changed in that regard. Josue Nelson, who is now co-hosting the Zeitgeist Pop Culture Show on CBC TV8, did not speak a word of English when he arrived at nine years old. His earliest memory was when his father took him into Bridgetown on one of the small private buses known as ZR vans, or simply ZRs, based on the letters of the registration plate. Josue said, and you go into this cramped ZR and the music is blaring. You're moving very fast. People are just obstructing you. Everybody is packed together. It was wild. I didn't know what to make of it back then, but I know that it was very confusing. My dad was like, you have to move quick with these ZRs. You have to come out quick, go back in quick, right? I was like, huh? I would get up. The conductor would open the door and everybody would go back out to just shuffle back into the seats to make room and people would be squeezing you together and you'd be like, but what are you doing? There's no room. I think Caribbean people can relate. Pablo Atwell, the executive housekeeper at the Radisson Aquatica Resort told me this story. One time I was working in Christchurch and somebody called me over the intercom. They called me by my last name. So a gentleman was passing and asked the security guard who was that person with that name? He said, some Cuban guy who was here. So that gentleman waited until I finished work. And when I was walking, he told me to get in his car. I said, no, I don't know who you are. But when I looked at him, I saw my grandfather's face, very similar. He told me that his family went to Cuba years ago, but they lost contact. He invited me to his house. And it so happened, I found out that he was my cousin talk about returning to roots. The publication raises questions about identity and belonging, such as, are you Cuban or Barbadian? Can you belong wholly to both countries or do you lose something somewhere in the migratory process? The Cubajans discuss their perceptions of how they're treated by other Barbadians and if they feel accepted. In addition to those already mentioned, I also interviewed Frank Philo, Isabel Dean, Yolanda Nelson Springer, Maria Thomas, Roberto Trotman, Nelson Goddard, the late Colbert Belgrave, and siblings Juana, Florencia, and Ernesto Yearwood. I thank them all for sharing their stories and precious family photographs with me so that I can share them with you, the wider audience. When you read A Return to Roots, I know that you will be as enthralled as I was with the Cubajans' stories.